So there was some homework in the main book for you. You guys had to listen to a conversation between two people at an art exhibition and uh, do some exercises and then write the audio script as well. So I'm going to first check the exercises with you. You see, first, when you look at the chart, the table, you see what are they doing? And the second column is, what do they do? So what are they doing? Of course, kya kar rahe hai? And what do they do? Kya karte hai? So what are they doing? Eric, what is Eric doing? He is standing in front of the window. And what does Eric do? He has an art shop in New York. He often visits London. These are the sentences that you hear as a response to what does Eric do? Tell me about Charlotte. What is Charlotte doing? Have you done the homework? No? Um, without putting in effort, expecting the result is illogical. So what do I do? Afrin, you are not answering either. Yes, sir. I have done the homework. Answer the question. What is Charlotte doing? She's laughing. Your voice sounds very weak. Have you not yes, recovered sir. completely from your sickness? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you have recovered. No, sir, you haven't no. recovered. What do you mean? No, sir, I'm quite good. Hmm, but your voice sounds very weak. Earlier, before you were sick, you sounded, your voice was quite strong, I would say. Yes, sir, that's why I couldn't attend the class properly. Mm -hmm. I think you should have a little more rest. Don't worry. So let's carry on. Um, let's listen to the conversation. Ten point six. Who's who at the art exhibition? Oh dear, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Don't. Oh dear, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Sometimes students try to learn English without appreciating that a language is not just about the words. It's also about the mood, about the tone. If you take these things out of the language, mood and tone, then you are left with just words. And they can be tricky to learn. When uh, we try to say things with the right mood, we also appreciate the grammar better. Oh dear, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Repeat. If you understand and appreciate the words, then repeat it with the mood, with the tone. Oh dear, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Sometimes when you are at a party or in a group of people uh, where they are all strangers, you feel a bit nervous. You want to go to a party, you want to go to a group where there are some people you know personally, right? 
But here she feels never she doesn't know anybody. Then she said, the man says, don't worry. Worry. They're all very nice. They're all very nice. When you go to a class where you have some friends, you feel confident, a little confident. When you go to a class where you know nobody, you, know, you feel nervous, naturally. So the sentence was, don't worry, they're all very nice. And the sentence is, they are all very nice. If you pay attention now, then you learn this sentence. They are all very nice. And later, all I have to do is just tell you that, remember the sentence? They are all very nice. You say, yes, sir. Notice the word order. They are all very nice. Usually, we put adverb all after be verb. They are all very nice. In English, we use the adverb all after verb be and before other verbs. They are all very nice. They all speak English. Notice the two sentences. We say they all speak English. Here in this sentence, all comes before the verb. They all speak English. And when I say be verb, they are all speakers of English. So all, all goes after be verb. This is the natural word order, okay? Hindi language speakers, you know, those who come from the Hindi linguistic background, they don't know this grammar rule and they just translate the words into English and they sometimes follow the Hindi word order and they say, they all are nice. That's not the natural order of the words. They all are nice. It should be, they are all nice. Because when all comes with be verb, it goes after be verb. You are all very selfish. I've just realized that. You are all very selfish. You are all very selfish. Instead of saying you all are very selfish, you are all very selfish. Okay. Hmm. We are all interested. We are all interested. Instead of we all are interested. We are all interested. We are all interested, okay? We all have interest in these things. We all have interest in these things. This is perfect, no problems. Because here the verb is not be. We all have a lot of interest in these things. So the position of the word all depends on the verb. If the verb is be, all goes after the verb be. Okay. So, wo sab ke sab piye huye the. Wo sab ke sab piye huye the. They were all drunk. They were all drunk. Instead of they all were drunk. Most students who learn English do not learn all the grammar rules properly. Perhaps there aren't many classes to teach them advanced level grammar rules. And that's why they keep following uh, their Hindi word order, making mistakes. They don't realize they're wrong. They develop a sense of, a false sense of confidence that their English is correct. To be correct, you need to know a lot, a lot. And this knowing takes place when you guys are reading, when you guys are listening attentively, trying to work out grammar from your reading, from your listening. So that's my suggestion to anybody who's learning English. Learn with a good teacher, study proper grammar, and 
while listening and reading, try and understand the grammar in those sentences. Observe patterns and it always helps to have a helping hand. It always helps to have somebody who can guide you, who can tell you, like I just said, they are all very nice. You guys heard this sentence in the audio file a couple of times, I'm sure, but you didn't bother, bother to think about the word order. Unless you're attentive while you're listening, while you're reading, you're not going to make much progress. So attentively listen, you know. They're all very nice. I'll tell you who everybody is. I'll tell you who everybody is. I'll tell you who everybody is. Did you understand that part? Where I explained where to put the word all in the sentence. It depends on the verb actually. People don't see the connection between the position of the word all in the sentence and the verb, but there is a connection. Let's have some other sentences, okay? If you have verbs where there are two parts, like the present perfect, you use has, have, and the verb three. The present continuous is MR and V4, okay? In negative sentences, you don't, you use don't and doesn't and the V1. In those cases, the verb goes between them. Like the word all goes between them. Like they have all agreed. They have all agreed. They have all agreed with you know to, to our proposal. They have all agreed. So where is the word all going? They have all agreed. I keep saying this, underestimating your enemy, underestimating your opponent is self-destructive. So there are people who underestimate English, the challenge of English as well. And those who underestimate cannot be very good at it. They learn to speak English. Of course, they will. They're putting in efforts, okay? But unless they put in 100% efforts, they won't get 100% results. So without studying these advanced level grammar rules, it's not possible for anybody to speak correct English if they are starting as an adult. If you started as a child, then it was easier for you. You just listen to your teachers, you listen to the right sources and you develop the same skill without having to go through all those doubts and you know confusions and conflicts in your mind. As an adult, you do feel confused, you know. So that's why listening carefully is important. Observing these things is important. Oh. Okay, moving on to the next part. Uh, they're all very nice. Uh, Can you see that man over there? Everybody is. Can you see? I'll tell you who everybody is. I'll tell you. I'll tell you who everybody is. I'll tell you who everybody is. Usually, when you say tell, tell is followed by somebody. You do not say tell and no object. You say tell and somebody. I'll tell you. You. Tell me. Me. So normally, when you have the verb tell, normally, it's not that there is just not possible. Normally, you put the object somebody after tell. Tell me your name. We don't say tell your name, okay? We say tell me your name, okay? We normally go with tell and somebody, okay? So I'll tell you who everybody is, the man says. I'll tell you who everybody is. See that man over there? The man who stands... Do you see that man over there? Do you see that man over there? Over there is at a distance. Do you see that man over there? Standing in front of the window. Yes. The man, the man in front of the window. 
You're talking about the man who is in front of the window. Yes, yes. The man wearing the bow tie. The man wearing the bow tie. Bow tie, a small thing here you wear at your at the collar of your shirt, right? So the man at the bow tie, the man wearing the bow tie. The man wearing the bow tie. The man who is wearing the bow tie. The man wearing the bow tie. Yes. That's Eric. He's That's Eric. That man is Eric. He's American from New York. He's American from New York. He has an art shop there. He has an art shop there. He often visits London to buy pictures. He often visits London to buy pictures. He's very rich and very... Very rich and very, very funny. Ah, oh, yes. I can see that. The woman next to him. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Nobody will translate. Hum dekh sakte hai. Ah, dekh rahe. That's how Bihari speak. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Him is laughing a lot. Who the woman is laugh? The woman he's talking to is laughing a lot. What is she, did she say? The woman. I can see that the woman next to him is laughing a lot. Who is she? The woman next to him is laughing a lot. Who is laughing a lot? The woman next to him. The woman next to him is laughing a lot. The woman next to him is laughing a lot. Who is she? That's Charlotte. That's Charlotte. So what is Charlotte doing? We just got an answer. Charlotte is laughing. What is Charlotte doing? Charlotte is laughing. Laughing at Eric's jokes. She's lovely. Very clever. She She's... That's Charlotte. She's lovely, very clever. She's lovely, very clever. Charlotte is lovely and very clever. Charlotte, Charlotte is a clever woman. She's a professor at the university. She's a professor at the university. She's a professor at the university. She teaches art history. Mm. Is how art history. You got the answer. What does Charlotte do? She teaches art history. She teaches art history. I like her bag. The woman says, I like her bag. This is typical. Women observe other women in this way. What they're wearing. <laughs> they will observe what they're carrying. What makeup they have put on. Okay. So what makeup they're wearing and all that stuff as well. So <laughs> we men, we rarely care about what shirt, what pants somebody's wearing, we rarely care. Some people, most don't, you know, but women care about such things. Oh, I like her bag. <laughs> and who's that on their left? She's- And who's that on their left? Who is that? on their left. So it's not that we use this and that only for things. We can use this and that for people and things alike to indicate who is that? She's pointing her finger towards a man or a woman and she's saying, who's that on their left? wearing a beautiful pink scarf and drinking wearing she's wearing a beautiful pink scarf and drinking champagne she's wearing a beautiful pink scarf and you know um drinking champagne, pink champagne. that's helena <laughs> she's that's helena that's helena okay she is the writer she writes the writer Stories for children. 
she writes stories for children. So you just got your answers for Helena. So what is Helena doing? She is drinking champagne. What is Helena doing? She's drinking champagne. And another answer, she's wearing a pink scarf. A beautiful pink scarf. And what does Helena do? She is a writer. She's a writer. She Four children. They're excellent. A very they are excellent. They are excellent. They means the stories that she writes. The stories are excellent. Very good quality. They are excellent. Very nice lady. Hmm. She's a very nice lady. And who's the man she's talking to? And who's the man she's talking to? Who's the man she's talking to? He's got a beard and he's wearing a big... He is very, he has got a beard. He's got a beard, beard. He's got a beard. I don't know why I have this tendency of pronouncing it beard. He's got a beard. He's got a beard. Okay. He's got a beard. And his... Black hat. Ah. He's wearing a black hat. He's wearing a black hat. That's Anton. He's an artist. A very. That's Anton. That's Anton. He's an artist. Interesting man. A very interesting man. He's a very interesting man. He lives and works in Paris most. He lives and works in Paris most of the time. He lives and works in Paris. At the time. That picture over there is one of his. 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 It's called the tree. Really? That picture over there is one of his. It's called the tree. Really? Wow. It's beautiful. So, what is Anton doing? Anton is talking to Helena. He's talking, and to, talking Helena. to Helena. And? And? He, Is wearing a black hat. He is wearing a big black hat. What does he do? He is he is an artist. Hmm. He has an art gallery. And most of the time he lives and works in? In Paris. Okay, so that's Eric and Charlotte, Helena and Anton. Now, who are those two over there? Who are those two over there? Who are those two over there? Those two. Who are those two over there? Those two. What don't know. Those two. Those two, these two, this one, that one, those three, these three. Easy, right? This is used with singular. So this one, that one, those two, these two, those three, these three. The guys with the brochure that they're looking at. The guy with the brochure. Who are those two? The guys with the brochure. 
Who are those two? The guys with the brochure. The guys with the brochure. Who are those two? The guys with the brochure. Brochure. B-R-O-C-H-U-R-E. The spelling is funny. B-R-O-C-H-U-R-E. Brochure. Okay. You can see the painting on the wall, the tree by Anton, and the brochure they are holding in their hands. The brochure also has the same painting. And other than the painting, you see some things written on that card. So usually a brochure is a piece of card which is usually folded, okay? You can fold it in two folds, three folds, you know, like that. And uh, it has information, pictures. It could be a brochure of an institute. It could be a brochure of a university. It could be a brochure of some other things, you know, a holiday package brochure. So a brochure is basically a card with some information and some pictures. People usually distribute, you know, brochures for advertisement. When they want people to know about something, they distribute brochures. When you visit an institute, maybe they'll give you a brochure to take with you. That brochure, that card will be folded will have information, contact numbers maybe, pictures and stuff like that. So that's called brochure. Is there a word in Hindi we use? For brochure. I can't think of any. Anton's painting. Ah, yes. That's Leon and Peter Vine. Yeah, that's Leon and Peter Vine. So when he said that's Leon and Peter Vine, the students who take grammar seriously would ask, sir, there are two people, then why that? Sometimes, when you hear such sentences like, that's Leon and Peter Wine, then you should understand that the sentences are like this. That's Leon and that's Peter Wine. That's Leon and Peter Wine. Here, because they're brothers, so the speaker is thinking of them as one, Leon and Peter Wine. Okay. They're brothers. They're brothers. And they're both art dealers. And do they... They're both art dealers. They're both art dealers. Work in London? Yes, they do. They have an art gallery in Bond Street. They have an art gallery in Bond Street. If we do not get the proper names right, it should bother you the least, actually. Because that's just a name. Whether it is Bond Street, Bond Street, Bonnie Street, how does it matter to your English knowledge? You don't live in England. Sometimes two names are very similar. So when you hear them for the first time, you can mix them up. But if you mix up names, it does not really show anything about your language skills. If there are two girls, one is called Anshika, the other is called Ashika, all right? and you do not get their names right every time you say, so what does that mean? Your Hindi is bad? Now, people mix up names. So don't misunderstand. Proper nouns are just names. Names are just proper nouns. Don't worry about them. Come with me. I'll introduce you to them. Come with me. I'll introduce you to them. Come with me. I'll introduce you to them. And I'll get you a brochure. Thank you. And I'll give you a brochure. I'll introduce you to them and I'll give you a brochure. 
Thank you. So the question would be, what are Leon and Peter doing? Not what is Leon and Peter doing? What are yes, Leon I, and Peter doing? I'll, I'll get, give you or I'll get you. I, I heard I'll get you. I'll get um, you a book, okay. sir. Sorry, Afreen. I heard I'll get you a brochure, sir. No problems. That's also correct. When you say to somebody, I'll get you something, it means you'll bring that thing for them. For example, when a guest comes to your house, you say, please have a seat. I'll get you some water. I'll get you some, means I'll bring some water. So both are fine, absolutely. Okay, sir. I didn't pay very close attention to whether he said get or give. If you want me, I can listen to it again and tell you what he said. 10.6 Come with me. I'll introduce you to them and I'll get you a brochure. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm listening to it on the big screen, big speaker. It's not very clear. Give, get, give, get. It's not very clear to me. Okay. I'll have to use the headphones to find out whether he said give or he said get. However, like I explained, they're both absolutely fine in this situation. Can you get me a glass of water? Like this. Can you get me a glass of water? Can you bring me a glass of water? Get me a glass of water, okay? And what do they do, Leon and Peter? They are looking at painting. What do they do? After my question is, what do they do? They, they, they are art. they are art dealers, sir. They are art dealers and they have they have an art gallery. They have in in, in Bond Street, Bond, right? Yes, the street. Okay, let me make it very clear. Students who speak Spanish and Italian as their first language or Russian as their first language will necessarily struggle a little bit or a lot to understand the difference between the present continuous and the present simple. Because in their language, when I speak of Italian and Spanish, they do have the present continuous and present simple both, but the uses sometimes can be slightly different from the uses in the English. For example, when somebody phones you and asks, what are you doing? You don't say, I watch TV. You say, I'm watching TV. You don't say, I eat bread. You say, I am eating bread. In English, there's only one option. When somebody phones you and asks you, what are you doing? Okay. Then you will only answer, I'm watching TV or I'm eating bread. But in Italian, it is possible to respond to this question on the phone with a present simple. And that will be considered okay in Italian. So the point is, if they speak, uh, students speak Italian, Spanish, in Russian, there isn't an idea of the present continuous. So of course, they will struggle a lot to uh, understand this concept of what the present continuous is. They don't have the present continu continuous in it, you know, in Russian language. Now, Having said that, 
why do Indians struggle? Indians should not struggle. If Indians struggle between the present continuous and the present simple, it is only because they have low IQ. I know I'm saying controversial things and some people will tro troll me saying, oh, you are a teacher, you should not have such cynical attitude. Why not? Truth must be told. How can you not understand the difference between hum ja rahe and hum jaate? If you don't understand the difference between hum ja rahe and jaate, then what kind of person are you? I'm not speaking English here. Hum ja rahe is not English. Hum jaate is not English. They are Hindi sentences. And if you mix them up, it means you are low IQ. As, as simple as that. Hum Sunday ko school nahi jaate hai, right? So you have already studied present simple. I don't go to school. And now you're talking about something happening now. Ja rahe school. Prashan mat karo. I'm going to school. Don't disturb me or don't make me late. I'm going to school now. Okay, whatever. So I'm buying a car. Khareed rahe. Okay, I teach. Hum padhate hai. I am teaching. Hum padha rahe hai. How can anyone who has got basic common sense or average IQ, confuse these two Hindi sentences. So it happens because of two reasons. One, I will accept it if you have never had any exposure to English. If you have never studied any English, it will take a little bit of time, but you'll understand it. But those who have been learning English all their lives and they can't understand the difference between I'm eating and I eat, then they are simply low IQ. There is no two ways to say that. There is no other way to say that. Yes. When it comes to making questions, you need practice. Because I understand in questions, present simple, I go, he goes, where does he go, does comes, and it can confuse you. I understand that, you know. But then the difference between the present simple and continuous should not be very difficult for somebody who speaks Hindi as their mother tongue because the ideas, the concepts of the present simple and the present continuous is exactly the same as in English. So why, why confusion? Why confusion when the things are exactly the same? So when I say, what do you do? I ask what you when I say, what are you doing? I'm asking, kya kar rahe hai? So, ap naaste mein kya khate hai? Because I'm talking about your routine. I will say, what do you eat for breakfast? And abhi kya kha rahe ho, sir? What are you eating now? So, do exercise three. Complete the sentences. The question. The answers are given. Let's see whether you are average IQ or low IQ. Number three.
Let's check. Where does Eric come from? New York. Who is he talking to? Charlotte. Two. She's a professor. Question. What does Charlotte do? What does Charlotte do? She's a professor. Next question. She's laughing at Eric's joke. What is she doing? What is she doing? What is she doing? Three. Champagne. What is Helena what drinking? Is Helena drinking? What is Helena drinking? Very good. Next, the stories for children. What does she write? What does she write? What does she write? Right. She writes stories for children. Number four, a big black hat. What is Anton wearing? What is Anton wearing? A big black hat. Paris. Where does, he... Where does he work? Where does he live and work? Where does he work? Very good. Paris. Number five. In Bond Street in London. Where, where, do, the, where do Leon and Peter live? And work. Where do Leon and Peter live or work? And Anton's painting. What are they looking at? What are they looking at? What are they looking at? Exactly. What are they looking at? Good job, everybody. You guys all got it right. Now, let me play the audio for you. 10.7. One shortcut is listening to the audio file. Listening to the audio file attentively can solve a lot of problems for you guys. 10.7 1. Where does Eric come from? New York. Who is he talking to? Charlotte. 2. What does Charlotte do? She's a professor. What is she doing? She's laughing at Eric's joke. 3. What is Helena drinking? Champagne. What does she write? Stories for children. 4. What is Anton wearing? A big black hat. Where does he live? Paris. 5. Where do Leon and Peter work? In Bond Street, in London. What are they looking at? Anton's painting. OK, done. So homework for tomorrow will obviously be exercise 4. You have to complete these sentences either using the present simple or the present continuous. Like I said, if you speak Hindi and you confuse these two, you are some, simply a slow person. That's it. Nothing else. And having, if I'm saying that you're a slow person, it doesn't mean you won't learn. You need more practice, of course. And you will always learn things slowly because if you're slow, you need more time. If I eat slowly, I need more time to finish my meal. If I run slowly, I need more time to finish my race. If I swim slowly, <laughs> I talk about swimming nowadays, you see, because I can swim a little. Okay, if you swim slowly, you need more time to cross the river, cross the swimming pool, right? So swim across the, the things. Okay, similarly, if you are a slow learner, then you learn, you need more time. I'm not saying you won't learn, yeah? And you need to spend more time, more concentration. I don't know. Why do people not appreciate karte hai and kar rahe are two different things? Tum jhagda kar rahe ho means abhi. 
तुम झगड़ा करते हो इज योर नेचर वेन आई क्रिटिसाइज समबडी नेचर आई से तुम झगड़ा करते हो आई एम क्रिटिसाइजिंग देर है बट इफ आई एम जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट दम नाउ देन आई से तुम झगड़ा कर रहे हो तुम समय बर्बाद कर रहे हो तुम समय बर्बाद करते हो दे आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग एंड इफ यू डोंट अप्रिशिएट दम इन योर मदर टंग हाउ डू यू एक्सपेक्ट दैट यू अप्रिशिएट द डिफरेंस इन अनदर लैंग्वेज फर्स्ट यू हैव टू अप्रिशिएट द डिफरेंस इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज सो इफ राशन स्ट्रगल विद द प्रेजेंट सिंपल एंड द प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस इट मेक्स सेंस बिकॉज द राशन डोंट हैव द प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस इफ स्पेनिश स्पीकर एंड इटालियन स्पीकर स्ट्रगल अ लिटिल बेट it makes sense because their uses are slightly different from you know the english language but indians hindi speakers well we have exactly the same tenses the present continuous and the present simple and the same uses there shouldn't be a problem except for a few sentences for example when you say main aaj white t-shirt pehne hue hu then i am wearing a white t-shirt today okay it's not pehan raha hu i understand that confusion but only with some verbs not with all verbs right concept wise it's easy certain verbs confuse you makes sense i agree i'll help you but then if you keep struggling if if you keep mixing up the present simple and the present continuous there is nothing much i can do you have to sit down and sit and observe practice and get better with these words let's wrap up for today and meet tomorrow um you have homework exercise 4 and homework in the practice book everybody the next page we have already done the first page i think of unit 10 have we not no we haven't okay so the first page of unit 10 will be your homework as well in the practice book let's meet tomorrow bye bye take care have a nice day